In this, the first session of Sunday, you'll see Nicholas Allen. If you enjoy the session, take a selfie and share your digital festival experience on our Facebook, Twitter or Instagram accounts to encourage your friends to join in too. So now, please give a virtual welcome to Nicholas Allen. Well, good day. Uh, I'm here to uh, entertain you and tell you about children's books, picture books, which I write and illustrate. And I thought I'd show you how, first of all, I start the day, which is usually um, with some chewing gum, because uh, this is a good way to get you going. And I always have a problem when I start. Do I use the spearman or do I have the um, fruity? And, or do I use this one like this? See? And you probably wonder, why I did that. And the reason I did it is because uh, when you write children's books, the first thing to do is to think, how am I going to get the audience's attention? And so that's why I did this trick, just to show you, uh, to get your attention. Now, the best way to, to get your attention if you're writing a book is to uh, get the front cover. So the most important thing about the front cover is to uh, get something that's striking, or you can use the title that is striking. But rarely, when I start writing, is to just sit down with a blank sheet of paper and just draw or think of funny titles. Uh, and um, one way I did this is, uh, when I sit down, i can only allowed to do two things. One is to... Um, sit down and write, or the other thing is to go to the toilet. And one day I was sitting in the toilet and I had nothing else to do except think about what writing I was doing. And when I got back, I just drew a toilet. And this was a toilet I did from drawing it from the side like this. Can you see that's a toilet? Like that. And that's the bit at the back. And then all I did was just sitting there for an hour. I just uh, put some teeth on it like this. And then I put an eye on it like that. And I instantly had a, a character for a book, which is quite a striking character because toilets hadn't been done before when this book came out. And I made a story like that called The Magic Lavatory. And you can see what the laboratory is like. And that's how you got your character. So that's a good way to start. So you're just trying to think of images that would be striking if you saw them. But uh, I didn't actually train as an illustrator. I was um, a painter of life, painter and portrait. And if you can draw a portrait and draw the figure, you can do practically anything. And my favourite artist at school was... Picasso, and Picasso uh, is a book that I wanted to write about because one reason he was my favourite artist is because he always did things that people told you you can't do. So as soon as someone said you can't do this, he would do it. And uh, that really impressed me, especially when it came to his trousers. And uh, there's a special story about his trousers which I wrote called Picasso's Trousers, and it was a story I heard at art school. And it's, it's, what's interesting is, I remember reading it in a book in art school. It's a very small thing about his trousers. And I always remembered it. And when I came to write the book, uh, the Picasso estate decided that I shouldn't be doing this book. And so they um, stopped me doing it. And they, although the book was bought by the publisher, it took seven years of threatened litigation. And then one day I went, to, the, my uh, editor flew me over to the Picasso estate to argue it out with them. And we argued and argued about this story about the Picasso's trousers. And finally they rang up uh, one of the Picasso's sons and uh, he confirmed it was true. Because I thought, it was, I, I, after art school, you know, 
25 years later. And so they took us out for lunch. And, uh, and, and we could do the book. So I'm going to read the book, and then I'll do something else. So are you all listening? And it begins. Well, Picasso was an artist. When he was young, he wanted to go to Paris to paint. No, 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 Picasso said his dad. But Picasso said, yes. When he got to Paris, he painted many pictures. He liked blue, so he decided to paint blue pictures. All blue. You can't paint all blue pictures, they said. No, 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 Picasso. But Picasso said, yes. Picasso was a very good, very good at faces. He liked painting faces from the front and from the side. So he decided to paint faces from the front and the side all at the same time. You can't paint a face from the front and the side all at the same time, they said. No, 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 Picasso. But Picasso said, it's a front, a side, front and side. And then Picasso soon left Paris and went to the south of France where the colours were beautiful. And Picasso liked to make art out of anything. So he thought he'd make art out of bike bits. Bike bits, they said. You can't make art out of bike bits. No, 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 Picasso. But Picasso said, yes. Picasso liked heavy things, but when he painted them, they never looked heavy enough. So he decided to paint heaviness. But you can't paint heaviness. No, 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 Picasso. But Picasso said, yes. Yep. Picasso became the fastest drawer in the West. You can't draw in 30 seconds, they said. No, 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 yes, said Picasso. Picasso soon became the greatest painter in the world. So he wanted, and he wanted to be the best dressed painter in the world. So he decided to buy some new trousers to match his stripy shirt. But all the stripes went the wrong way. You can't have stripes the other way, they said. They'll make you look short and fat. No, 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 Picasso. No, said Picasso. Good. No, no, no. But Picasso said... Yes. Yep. And yes. And perhaps... If we can find it, even yes. There we are. The end. And there you can see the real Picasso with his real trousers. It was a true story. There we go. Now, one of the great things about Picasso, he was very good, best artist in the world at hands. He could draw hands terribly well, and it's a very difficult thing to draw. And most people make the mistake of drawing their hands uh, too small if they're drawing. And you can tell if it's right by taking your hand like this, and if you pull it up to your face, it'll go up to your hairline if you have one. And what you can do to check is when you do a drawing is to make sure that the hair is, uh, that the hand is the same size as the face. Now what I'll show you is a quick way of drawing a hand which you may find useful. Uh, because if you could draw the figure for illustrated children's book, it's very useful uh, to know these little tricks. And one way is to imagine the um, hand is a mitten. So you can draw it like this. So you draw it like that and then you put the fingers on afterwards like that and then you can usually get it right. And if your hand is holding a lightsaber, like this, you just draw it as a mitten and then put the fingers on afterwards, like that. So it's gripping them, like that, see? And now, something completely irrelevant, I thought I'd show you, actually I'll show you how to make a face very angry. This is a face. And the eyes, most people think the eyes are about here. But the eyes are right in the middle like that. 
right in the middle. And now, we don't know because with the hair, that's why it looks dip odd. And there's the face. And to make him more angry, if you want an angry face, you can do things like this, or like that, or like that, or you can have steam coming out. You can have a cloud. To make him really angry, you could do this. See if I could do it. Like that, can you see it? There you are, angry face. Um, I just thought I'd quickly show you what a, a hard copy dummy book looks like. And this is, this is about a little um, mouse who gets on a train and is picked up by horrible characters like vampires, werewolves, and things. So you can see where it's just simply set up. And that's what you send to the publisher. And if they like it, they'll send you back lots of money and publish your book. And these are some of the illustrations, not done on a machine, just done by hand. See like that? And these are all the characters. Vampire, the werewolf, ghost, little mouse. And then uh, that's what it looks like when you start colouring it in. Like that. Oh, that way. Like that. And this is one of the finished werewolves. And that's uh, the vampire. Uh, which I thought was too scary. Probably the eyes for five-year-olds. What do you think? Now, um, this is something you can do on the machine as well. You can take, take your machine, which I showed you, uh, and ha do the illustration, and then you can change all the colours very quickly. And then you just decide which one's best for your illustration. And, and then you can use that one the final and you can see all the different different uh, variations you can have it goes on forever but um, sometimes it's best to just do it once and that's that now I thought I'd show you two, uh, one other thing this is about um, titles because I was talking about the image of the front image and which makes you pick the book up at the bookshop and that's the main thing You've just got to get them to pick it up. That's what you want. But also it's got to be uh, entertaining for yourself. Otherwise it's not worth doing. And so I like uh, something that's provocative. Um, and also something that would go. And, and something that children might like. So uh, that's how I came about The, the Queen's Knickers. Which is one of the books that uh, does very well. And uh, this came about from just um, linking two things. We don't know much about the Queen and we don't know much about uh, what she might wear. And it's to make um, someone who is quite uh, mysterious and um, uh, respected and to show that she has uh, knickers just like everybody else. And one, this book now is now uh, nearly 30 years old. But uh, one of the images that's most uh, looked at is that one of her parachute knickers and people think I added that uh, the Olympics, after the Olympics uh, but in fact I didn't uh, it was there 30 years ago which is probably why she agreed to do it and the other one I thought I'd show you is um, actually for the children I thought I'd show you something very special about this um, book and as you know uh, you probably don't know, the so Queen made, makes all the money, all your money, because she, she owes the Royal Mint. And uh, uh, children, as well as adults actually, are always interested in how to make money. And so I thought I'd show you the, how she uh, does it. And uh, she does it, it's very easy, you can do it yourselves. And I'll quickly show you uh, if I can do it myself. And what you do is you take a five pound note, like this, and then, if I can do this prop, I'm not very good at this. There's the five pound note. And then you just have to fold it correctly, like this. 
and like that, like that, and like that. Just turn it over and then open it here, like that. How are we doing? Like this, like that, and we've got a £10 there. Very good. And now, actually, I thought I'd show you something else if I've got it here. This is, ah, uh, oh, this is, I sometimes show this to children too. This is the uh, key to the Queen's Palace. And you can see it's, I don't know if you can see that. Is it very clear? And um, what you do is, it's a very special key because it goes like this. You just go like this. And it, it moves a bit. See? Do it like this. Yes. And then you can turn the key wrong all the way around like that. And now I'll ask Maggie if she can move that bit of key. It should have come up here, see? <laughs> Audience participation. Yeah. Try to move that bit of key. See if you can move the key. No. Yeah. Try as hard as you can. I am. Hard, I solid. Am I am solid. Here's a solid key. In more ways than one. Solid key. <laughs> there we are. But the um, book, I'm not going to read you this one, but uh, another one I got from a title was Father Christmas Needs a Wee. And I thought I'd read you this one because um, it's nearly Christmas. Well, you know, a couple of months. And uh, this book came about from thinking, again, about taking a character who's um, quite sort of special and thinking about um, how uh, he's normal like everybody else. And Father Christmas needs a wee like anyone else. Because it seems very strange that no one's thought of um, the fact that he, at every house, has a drink. At some point he's going to need a wee. Now you might think, well, he could have weed on the um, rooftop, couldn't he, I suppose. But uh, this is a very polite version of it. So I'll read you the book. And it begins, Father Christmas needs a wee. He's been drinking drinks since half past three. At number one, one hot chock yum. At number two, two plates of stew. At number three, three cups of tea. At number four, he had four more. At number five, five pops with pies. At number six, six fruit, fruit mix, all six. At number seven, milk, pure heaven. At number eight, eight cool milkshakes. At number nine, nine lemon and limes. And number ten, ten teas. And then, I think that you will clearly see why Father Christmas needs a wee. But oh, what with all those drinks in mind, he forgot to leave the presents behind. So... At number 10, he left 10 pens. At number 9, 9 nursery rhymes. At number 8, 8 pairs of skates. At number 7, 7 sweets, more heaven. At number 6, 6 colourful bricks. At number 5, 5 toys that drive. At number 4, 4 beasts that roar. At number 3, 3 Christmas trees. At number 2, 2 cows that moo. At number one, one pup that runs. And so at last his work is done. And now it's time for him to flee, for Father Christmas needs a wee. Through the town, across the sky, the sledge it rises, rises high. Above the clouds and over the sea, he must be quick, he needs his wee. Yep. At last he's back, all home and safe. Just look at the smile upon his face. He feels in his pocket, but where is the key? For Father Christmas needs a wee. An elf with a gift appears at the door. I found this key just here on the floor. He thanks the elf and turns the lock. He runs up the stairs right up to the top. And there is the loo. He shuts the door. Oh, happy Christmas, we hear him roar. The end. <laughs> wow, what a book. And now to end... I'm going to show you 
uh, Father Christmas special uh, underpants he wears at Christmas. And here it is. There we are. Now, as you know about global warming, uh, you'll know that the snow often melts. And when the snow melts, these come in very useful. Because what he does, he screws, he takes them off and screws them up into a little ball like that. And then he dips them in the melted snow. Uh, now, I haven't got any melted snow here, but I do have a glass of water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip the water, I mean, this, there, like that. See, so it's all wet, all dripping. Now, he can't put them back on, uh, so what he does, actually, he takes them in his hand and he gets a fan like this, and then he dries them. And there we are, snow. Happy Christmas. Our thanks to Nicholas Allen. Thank you very much for participating in the Red Funnel Isle of Wight Digital Literary Festival. If you've enjoyed this presentation, please consider making a donation. Follow the Donate Now button from the homepage of our website. You can also benefit from great discounts by ordering via Blackwell's Bookshop from our homepage. We'd like to thank the loyal sponsors who've supported the Isle of Wight Literary Festival over the past years. Without their financial contribution, it would be difficult to attract the many wonderful speakers we've hosted, while keeping ticket prices down. This year, their support has enabled us to provide the digital festival free of charge. Special thanks to Red Funnel, who've been our title sponsor for many years, and, as well as providing financial support, offer a warm welcome to speakers and visitors to the island for the festival.